Hello everyone, and welcome to the Power BI Embedded session in Microsoft Build. My name is Alon Baram, and for the last few years, I'm the product manager for Power BI Embedded Product Group in Microsoft. Today, I'm going to present and demonstrate our best practices for deploying Power BI Embedded to production and scaling it to many customer tenants. On the agenda for today, I'll provide a quick introduction to Power BI Embedded Analytics and the most common options to deploy Power BI Embedded Analytics to many customer tenants. Then, I'll demonstrate our new preferred option of scaling Power BI Embedded using Service Principal Profiles. So what is Power BI Embedded Analytics? It's having Power BI Analytics infused in your web application where you can use and brand it as your own. It allows you to personalize user experience and visuals, choose the best way to visualize your data, and the best way to make it feel part of your user flow. You can keep user information secured and use row-level security to limit the user's access to data. Lastly, it is purpose-built for developers by developers. It includes client APIs, REST APIs, and tools, enabling developers to automate processes and minimize time to market. And now, let's explore the most common options to deploy Power BI Embedded Analytics for users. Customers deploy Power BI for their users depending on their profile and needs. You can see in the frame at the top of the slide Power BI authenticated users can consume analytics in website, portals, or SharePoint web part within their organizations. At the bottom, you can see the embedding options for non-Power BI authenticated users. We call it Embed for Your Customers, or White Labeled Embedding. Embed for Your Customers makes use of one entity to manage all authentications to Power BI. Users authenticated to the web application with any authentication method selected by the app owner. In this option, Power BI offers the ability to white label embedded content. Our two main options for developers are the ones powered by Client SDK. Embed for your organization, also known as User Owns Data, and Embed for your customers, known as App Owns Data or White Labeled Embedding. This session will focus on Embed for your customers, which is mainly for external users, where the app owners can use their own authentication. End users do not need a Power BI license. And the authentication flow is non-interactive, that is, no user action is needed for Power BI authentication. And now, I will describe the best practices for deploying and managing multi-tenancy with Power BI embedded. So what is multi-tenancy in Power BI embedded? A tenancy model determines how each customer tenant's data is mapped and managed within Power BI and the application storage. It defines a separation level between customers, known as tenants, and it impacts scalability, automation processes, and cost. There are two main approaches for multi-tenant deployment of Power BI embedded. Workspace-based separation, where you create a separate Power BI workspace per tenant, and row-level security-based separation, where the underlying data is used to control and manage access to data per user or group. In both methods, the app owner needs to create development environment and perform the following steps. First, create a service principal. Then, add it as a workspace member to an app workspace that includes the analytics package connected to pre-pro data source. Going to production differs between the methods. With RLS-based separation, you create a production workspace, publish the pre-prod content into this new workspace, connect the production dataset to the customer's data source, use RLS to filter 
uh, to separate between customers. And lastly, assign the production uh, workspace to capacity resource. With workspace-based based separation, you create a workspace per customer, publish the pre-prod content into each new customer's workspace, then update each customer's dataset to connect to the data source, and assign one or more capacities. Workspace-based separation is the recommended method as it provides better data separation, better scalability, and it's more cost-effective. I will describe now how is content managed and what is the user flow in a multi-tenancy environment. In this example, I'm using the preferred method which is workspace-based separation. The end users that connect to your web application may be from different customers, let's call them tenants. They authenticate to your app where you have your business logic by using mapping strategy on the backend side of your application, you can map each user to the relevant parameters. For example, which report and dataset the user should have access to, which workspace and service principal profile are associated with user's tenant, and what RLS rule should be enforced for the user. Then, the application uses these parameters to get the right embed token for the users and pass, the, pass it to the user's browser. The browser uses the embed token to communicate with Power BI service directly. For multi-tenant application design using workspace separation, we used to offer three options and recently we have launched the fourth one using service principal profile. I'll review the three briefly to emphasize the strength of the fourth. The first solution we offered was single service principal. The biggest downside is that you can only go up to 1000 workspaces, but you're also going to slow down gradually as you reach hundreds of workspaces. And because service principal is owner of data source credentials across all customer tenants, you are far from optimal data source credentials isolation. The good aspect of this option is the one-time creation of Azure AD application for service principal. Service principal pooling was another option. It was the most popular for larger Power BI embedded customers. Scalability is not limited, but performance and isolation issues are still not solved and you still need to go back to IT occasionally to create new Azure AD applications as number of customer tenants increases. One service principal per customer tenant used to be the recommended option as it solved scalability, performance, and isolation issues. But there's a need to continuously create new Azure AD applications, and for large organizations, this could be a bureaucratic nightmare. Service principal profile per customer tenant is our new and recommended option as it solves all the issues I've mentioned before. Plus, it requires only one-time creation of Azure AD application for service principal. So what is a service principal profile? Service principal profiles are local Power BI accounts created by a service principal. They are created by an API and you can create as many as you need by a single service principal. They are unknown to Azure AD. It's totally a Power BI thing. The ISV application, Service Principal, creates a different Power BI profile for each customer. When a customer visits the ISV application, the application uses the corresponding profile to generate an embed token that will be used to render a report in the browser. Using Service Principal profiles enables the ISV application to host multiple customers on a single Power BI tenant. Each profile repre represents one customer in Power BI. In other words, each profile creates and manages Power BI content for one specific customer's data. Looking from a security model point of view, 
Service Principal Profile is a first-class security principle in Power BI authorization system. It can be added as a workspace member, execute Power BI REST API calls to create workspaces, datasets, and set data source credentials, and it can generate embed tokens. As you can see in the Solutions Comparison table, it combines the best of all other options – low Azure AS overhead, complete data source isolation, and optimized Power BI API performance. I will drill down a bit to creation and management of service principal profiles. The first thing you need to do is to enable a new Power BI tenant feature switch called Allow Service Principals to Create and Use Profiles. Your Power BI Tenant Admin can do it in the Power BI Admin Portal, Tenant Settings, Developer Settings. As usual with the workspace-based separation, you also need to make sure that the following two feature switches are enabled as well. Allow Service Principals to use Power BI APIs and Create Workspaces to allow our service principal profiles to create workspaces for customer tenants. Now here is the Profiles API. Our engineering team have introduced a new Profiles API, which is used to create and manage service principal profiles. You can find the documentation for the Profiles API at the presented URL. A profile is basically a name with a GUID on it and you can create, delete, get, and update it. So, how do you create a new customer tenant using a service principal profile? The first step is to execute an API call to create a new service principal profile with its display name. That first call is made under the identity of the parent service principal, but this is the only one. All the remaining Power BI REST API calls shown in the following list could be made under the identity of the service principal profile that has just been created. Create workspace, assign workspace to capacity, import PBIX, update dataset parameters, set credentials, and start refresh. That's basically what you need to do to create a new customer tenant. And you can do it for hundreds of thousands of customer tenants using only one service principal. I'll demonstrate now the AppOwns Data Multi-Tenant application developed by Ted Pattison, a principal PM in the Power BI Customer Advisory Team and an industry-leading expert on developing with Power BI Embedded Analytics. The application demonstrates how to manage a multi-tenant environment for Power BI Embedded using service principal profiles. You can find a link to the resources of this app in the Power BI Embedded Analytics resources slide at the end of this session deck. The design strategy used by the AppOwns Data multi-tenant application optimizes calls to the Power BI REST API while also providing complete dataset and data source credential isolation at the customer tenant level. The design of the AppOwns Data multi-tenant application makes it possible to scale upwards to manage an environment with up to and beyond hundreds of thousands of customer tenants. The AppOwns Data multi-tenant application provides a form which allows the user to create a new customer tenant. When using the application, you can enter the tenant name for a new customer and the details of the customer's database. Let's call the first one Aviv1. When you click the Create New Tenant button, the application resp responds by executing code, which begins by creating a new service principal profile using the same name as the tenant name. After creating the service principal profile, the application then switches context and begins calling the Power BI REST API using that profile identity to create the new workspace and populate it with content. This application design maintains a one-to-one -one relationship between service principal profiles and customer tenant workspaces, which is what we recommend as best practice. Now, I click the Onboard New Tenant button again to create a second customer tenant. 
Let's call it David1. Select Contoso Sales from the drop-down list for database name and create new tenants. You can see now that I have two customer tenants. When I click the Profiles link, I can examine each of the profiles that have been created. When I click on the Power BI Profiles link, the application calls the Get Profiles operation of the Power BI REST API to retrieve all the profiles that have been created by the application's service principal. Now that I've created two customer tenants, I can access their content by navigating back to the Tenants page and clicking on the View button for a specific tenant on the Tenants page to drill into the Tenant Detail page. The Tenant Detail page displays Power BI Workspace detail including its members, datasets, and reports. The app owns data multi-tenant application can also embed reports. On the Tenant page, I click the Embed button for Aviv1 tenant to navigate to the Embed page where I can see a page with an embedded report for Aviv1 tenant. When I click the Embed button for David1 tenant, I can see that the application is able to embed a report from any customer tenant. When a user navigates to the Embed page for a customer tenant, the application must determine which service principal profile was used to create the target workspace. The application performs a lookup in the app owns data multi-tenant DB database to determine which service principal profile ID is associated with the target workspace. The application is then able to query for workspace artifacts and to generate the embed token using the service principal profile's identity. If you're curious about what's been created in Power BI, you can see it by navigating to the Power BI service portal and you should be able to see and navigate to any of the Power BI workspaces that have been created by the app on data multi-tenant application. When I navigate to Workspace Aviv 1 and I click on the Workspace Access pane, I can see two members including my user account, Sabri, and a service principal profile. When I drill into the setting page for the dataset named Sales, I can verify that the Sales dataset has been configured by a service principal profile which is evidenced by the service principal profile object ID that you can see. With that, we conclude the app owns data multi-tenant application demo, and I hope it has allowed you to get an impression of the new multi-tenancy design option based on service principal profiles we've introduced a few weeks ago. To conclude this session, we're providing you with links to our developer samples, documented APIs, Power BI Embedded Playground, Embed Setup Tool, and more. As always, we encourage you to provide feedback at Power BI IDs, see the link at the bottom of the page. And if you ask yourself, what is the best way to get updates and help? Power BI developers' periodic blog posts present all the new features and updates. Stack Overflow will get you help from the developers' community, and in their own words, for developers, by developers. That's all folks, I would like to thank you for watching this session. Feel free to send me questions and I will try to respond them all. Ciao!